Decision trees are graphs. They're actually networks known as trees in which decisions occur at the vertices. We're going to start with dependence and conditions. We've looked at what it means for variables to be independent, but what does it mean for them to be dependent? So let's review a little bit. Probability and information. We have a sample space, a random variable associated with a sample space. A probability that the random variable is some outcome. We often use P sub J or P of J. Uh, often use the lowercase x as the index. Information is the negative log base 2 of the probability, and it's also known as surprisal. Entropy is expected information. So joint probability and in information, our sample space is doubly indexed. We have two variables, and we index with their lowercase x and y. We have marginal probabilities. The sum over the y's gives us a probability as a function of the index x, and the same thing for the marginal with respect to y. And joint information is just the base 2 logarithm of the probability, or how surprised we are by a lowercase xy event uh, from the capital X and Y. Entropy is expected information and it's the same if it's joint or just a single variable. Later we'll show that joint entropy is less than or equal to the sum of the ent entropies. But right now we just need to think about the following. Independent variables we saw we get the self-information, uh, joint self-information is the sum of the informations. The joint entropy is the sum of the entropies. The information there is for individual outcomes and joint entropy is average over the outcomes. Although I say average technically and we should always think in terms of a limit of averages that is expected value. And we show that if x and y are independent, then their joint probability distribution is the product of their marginal uh, probabilities. But what if x and y are dependent? In particular, if x and y are dependent, what could knowledge of one tell us about the likelihood of the other? That brings up the concept of conditional self-information. How does y depend on a condition such as capital X, the variable, takes an outcome little x. We'll use the notation uh, I of capital Y equals Y given that uh, capital X is lower x. That bar there of course means given that as you heard me say. We'll drop the variables if it's understood what we're doing. And so we have I of Y given X lowercase y and x is the self-information that we get from capital Y is little y given that capital X is lowercase x. So intuitively the uh, conditional self-information measures how surprised we are by capital Y taking a value little y given that we know that capital X is equal to lowercase x. We've seen this before. If X is my coin and Y is used coin, then independence is going to be modeled by the fact that we're on opposite sides of the earth. And therefore, uh, the information from Y given X is just the information of Y, and it doesn't matter what uh, value X takes because we're on opposite sides of the earth. What's going to happen with Y is going to happen independent of X. But what if we have a ruler and you and I attach our coins to opposite ends of the ruler. Now we have total dependence. If we know the value of X then we also know the value of Y. So therefore the surprisal, how surprised we are by getting Y given X is zero. We're not surprised at all. In other words the self-information or surprisal 
is what we get from the joint entropy, I'm sorry, the joint information of X and Y beyond what we've already had seen from the uh, self-information of X. So the self-information of Y given X is just the joint information minus the individual information for X. If X and Y are independent, then the joint information is, or the conditional information is the joint information minus I of X, but the joint information is just the sum I of X plus I of Y, and therefore we get what we expected, that the conditional is the same as the uh, information itself because Y, uh, the value of X doesn't matter if we have independence. On the other hand, if the self-information is the same as the I of X, in other words, if uh, my coin and use coin are attached to opposite ends of a ruler, then the information we get from Y given X is again the difference and that's zero. So total dependence of Y on X means that the conditional surprisal, how surprised we are by Y given X, is equal to zero no new information. Let's look at an example. Jane chooses from three cards number 0, 1, 2. John chooses a card from the two remaining. X will be Jane's card. Y will be John's card. There's our sample space. Our probability, uh, uh, joint probability for any of these outcomes is a sixth because any one of these is equally likely to occur. Therefore, the joint information is the log base 2 of 6. So, each of the three cards is equally likely for Jane. So, the self-information from x equals 0, or x equals 1, or x equals 2 is the log base 2 of 3. So now we have the joint information is log base 2 of 6 and the self-information is log base 2 of 3 for all y not equal to x because John can't get uh, Jane's card. Now we look at the conditional information which is the joint minus the individual. That's the log base 2 of 6 minus the log base 2 of 3. Log base 2 of 2 and that's 1. So the information for y given x is 1 bit. In other words, once we know the value of x, we can encode the outcomes for y into a one-bit string. So if x is equal to 2, then we know that y is either a 0 or 1, and that's a single binary digit. So now we can look at conditional probability. So the conditional probability, p of y given x, is the likelihood that y is equal to y given that x is equal to x and we interpret it as a likelihood. Uh, there's a formula for it. P of Y given X is the joint divided by the individual. Notice that the largest possible value for the uh, individual, uh, the joint, is uh, the individual, so therefore this has a largest value of 1. And we can prove this formula from self-information. As a matter of fact, it's actually a little easier to understand conditional information than it is conditional probability. Let me show you. So let's suppose we look at the conditional self-information and it's equal to a logarithm of a probability. It's also equal to the joint minus the individual self-informations. We put those two together and again with the logarithms for the joint and the individual and therefore the definition of conditional self-information written in terms of logarithms gives us that the negative log base 2 of the conditional probability is the negative log base 2 of this ratio of probabilities and there it is. So for example if John, Jane chooses from three cards numbered 0, 1, 2, and Jan, John chooses a card from the two remaining. X is Jane's, Y is John's. There's our sample space. Joint probabilities are a sixth. The individuals are a third. 
the conditional probability, the probability of y given x, is the ratio of those and that's equal to a half. No surprise at all and that of course would again give us a conditional self information of one bit. Now let's look at specific conditional entropy. Suppose y has outcome 0 up to capital K minus 1. Now we're using this numbering because this capital Y is going to model K classes of a classifier. The entropy of Y given the value of X is defined to simply be the expected value of the conditional self information with respect to Y. So the specific conditional entropy is the expected value of self information with respect to Y which means it's the information we expect from Y beyond the information we have already gathered from knowing that X is equal to X. Self information difference is about to become very important and it's how much we've learned about Y once we know that capital X is equal to X. If X and Y are independent then these two are equal and therefore we learn nothing by knowing about X. So we can't learn about Y unless Y is dependent on X. If they're completely dependent then the conditional self information is zero and therefore Y cannot surprise us once we know what X is. The difference is just the information for Y because complete dependence means we've learned everything that Y must be uh, once we know about X. An example back to our cards and notice now we're going to take the information difference and I'm going to look at this for a little x equal to zero and it's going to be uh, the log base 2 of 3 minus 1 which is about 0 0.549625 and that's about the same for the others. So initially we had a 1 in 3 chance of guessing John's card. But if I guess John's card after Jane tells us what her card is, then there's a 1 in 2 chance of being correct. So on an earlier slide we showed that we had this self-information two slides ago actually. This information difference. Notice we can rewrite the 1 as the log base 2 of 2 and we can rewrite this as our difference of logarithms. Okay, So essentially the information we've gained is the improvement uh, based on the probabilities. We improved from a third to a half in picking out what John's card is. Now self-information differences are very closely related to what's known as Bayes' theorem. So let's look at Bayes' theorem. We've got our definition of self-information. We're going to rewrite it. The negative of the self-information is equal to the reverse of those. So if we take this information difference, then we get the information of x plus the information of y minus the joint information. Now let's regroup. So we'll make this i of x minus the joint minus i of y. And what have we now shown? We've shown that the information difference uh, in Y with respect to X is the same as the information difference of X uh, with respect to Y. And we'll rewrite that again solving for the I of X given Y and that's going to be the uh, self information of Y given X plus I of X minus I of Y. Back to the logarithms. I don't have my negatives here because it took up room but all the negatives cancel. Here we go. That's what we'll get when we just simply write down the definition of the informations, put those together using the laws of logarithms, and voila, we get Bayes' theorem. So specific information gain is what we've learned about y on average given that x is equal to x. Expected information and we just are going to move that out and there's our specific entropy 
And so we've got this uh, h of y minus h of y given x. That's the expected information gain for y given that x is the specific value x. Now, the specific information gain is actually a function of the little x there, or a function in the little x argument. So we can find its expected value. So the expected value is the expected gain in information about y given full knowledge of x. So we write out the definition of expected value with respect to x. Notice that the entropy of y is independent of x, and so we'll just pull it out front, and the sum of the probabilities is 1. And the other part is the conditional entropy. And this quantity is what we're going to call the information gain. And so we've actually shown that information gain in y, given x, is the entropy minus this uh, uh, conditional entropy of y given x. So let's look at an example. We've got y again as one of our classes. Now let's suppose x is either true or false. So maybe we have a condition on some feature in a data set. It's true if the condition satisfied and false if it's not. So in that case our conditional entropy would be the probability of true times the specific entropy for true plus probability of false times the specific entropy for false. And the information gain would be the information that we would gain about y from knowing whether or not the condition on the feature is true or false. So decision trees are coming. Information gain is going to be used to create decision trees based on whether a factor is true or false. Now I use factor here, but that's the same as feature in machine learning, and I'll start using these interchangeably. But suppose we had a condition such as height is less than or equal to 6 feet. That's true for some people, but it's false for others. And the information gain will tell us how much we've learned about y from knowing if the height less than or equal to 6 feet is true or false. So in summary, conditional information, probability, entropy, refers to the fact that y depends on x. Information gain from y can be reduced by the knowledge that x equals x is certain to occur. Uncertainty in y can be reduced by knowledge about x. And information theory says the reductions occur in the form of a difference. Self-information differences and conditional self-information and ultimately our goal, information gain.